it was a relatively short cruise and we had a very ambitious list of objectives. The, the primary objective was to be able to collect a, a fair number of samples and I've been told by Nicole, who's our data manager, that we really kind of set the record for a number of samples collected uh, in this short of a cruise. So these samples are, are really important in terms of linking these debris avalanches to various parts of the, of the island and understanding um, exactly how, how big some of these debris av avalanches might be and will help tremendously in assessing the geohazards associated with debris avalanche flow into the ocean. In particular, the tsunami generation hazards uh, that might take place along the arc. So it seems that both the, the, the number of debris avalanches and the, the, the sort of recent time period that they've taken place suggests that um, the Montserrat area is perhaps of, of a slightly higher risk to uh, tsunamis generated by debris avalanches compared to Dominica. The one at Dominica was much larger, but in general, probably what we think is the ones at Dominica are, are larger but less frequent. The work around the area where the St. Patrick's Village was destroyed on the south coast of Montserrat, uh, we were expecting this volcanic blast to continue on into the ocean and to essentially wipe out the marine community on the seafloor in the area where St. Patrick's was destroyed. What we found was completely opposite of what we, we thought, that right offshore of St. Patrick's, there are hundreds of thriving corals on the seafloor that uh, must have been able to survive this blast. And the only way they could have survived it is if there really wasn't any flow that continued on into deep water. So the corals and the biological community that were there off of St. Patrick's benefited from being underwater. They were essentially saved by the fact that they were beneath the sea, whereas everything above the ocean in that area was completely wiped out by this very energetic volcanic blast in 1997. And we know that uh, during this process, uh, an important uh, effect of this, of putting so much rock and debris into the ocean, is to generate large-scale tsunamis. So the impact on, on people can be significant. Uh, the rocks, as I say, the rocks just look like a pile of rocks on the seafloor now, but at one time they were highly mobile, carrying a tremendous amount of energy, and that energy of the collapse was transmitted into the ocean and that allows the destructive power of the volcano to be transmitted over very large areas because the water waves can fan out over the Caribbean and, and impact on, on distant coastlines. So the, uh, it's a ripple effect, if you like, of magnifying the power of the volcano and distributing that energy over a large area. So the human impact is, can be potentially significant.